During my video on dehacked and editing text in 2019, I mentioned in passing a data lump called MapInfo that you could use to edit a lot of the metadata around Doom levels. I got another question recently that reminded me I should possibly follow up on this, so here at last is a guide to episodes and MapInfo. MapInfo is a lump, or piece of data in a Doom mod file, that is written in plain text and is interpreted by Doom source ports. Despite its name, it can control an enormous number of properties of the game, not just defining maps, but much wider game appearance and behaviour, including how the auto map works, defining identifiers for custom objects, and adjusting the skill levels that the player can play on. There's a lot to cover in it, but for this video, I'm going to concentrate on what map info can do in terms of organising maps in a WAD into episodes. The original two Doom games treat their level progression in a very rigid way. In Ultimate Doom, each of the four episodes, selectable from the title screen, consists of eight standard maps and one secret level each. In Doom 2, the game acts like one continuous 30 map long episode with just two secret levels. The links between these levels are hard coded into the executables and editor control of them is very limited. All you're provided with is two types of exit actions, one to exit the level normally, and one to exit and go to the secret level. The executable for Doom 1 knows to advance the level from E1M1 to M2 to M3 and so on when the player activates a normal exit line. However, if a secret level exit line exists in any map and is used by the player, the game will move them from wherever they are to the episode's secret ninth map instead. The game has a list hard-coded in the exe that tells it where to send the player after they finish a map numbered 9 depending on the episode number. The secret level doesn't know or care about how the player got there. For example, map 3 of episode 1, Toxin Refinery, contains an exit to the secret ninth map of that episode, Military Base. Once that map is finished, the game looks up the special case for map 9 to work out where to send the player to next, which in this case happens to be map 4, allowing them to continue as if they'd just completed the third level. If you're playing on the iWads, this bit of a hack doesn't cause a problem because secret exit lines only exist in the levels directly before the ones the secret level exit code is set up to point to. However, if a WAD author puts a secret exit line in a map other than E1M3, it can produce some odd effects. Depending on where the player originates from, they can let them skip forwards or even backwards in the map list. Doom 2 is very similar. Its sequence of levels is strictly linear up to map 15, where a secret exit exists that will spirit you into Wolfenstein in map 31. This secret level itself contains a secret exit, which will transport especially diligent players to the super secret level map 32. Both of these secret maps contain normal exits that will put the player back into the regular sequence at map 16. Absolutely none of this is customizable in Vanilla Doom or its more classic oriented source ports. Nobody ever worked out how to alter the level order even with Dhack's wealth of options. The code compiled into the exe will always start where the episode selection screen tells it to, advance the level up by one if the player hits a standard exit, and contains a branching tree of special cases for dealing with the Doom and Doom 2 secret levels that can't easily be overridden. There is one trick that classic Doom 2 WAD authors use to make their WADs more episodic, which I'll mention at the end, but this video is mostly going to be for modern source ports that support the map info lump such as GZ Doom. For this video, we're going to work with a map set I've been playing by The Gaming Fox called Sanctium, which is intended to have several episodes of six maps each. Using Slade, we're going to create a map info lump outside any of the map markers to script the layout of these episodes. Or if you're making a PK3, you would use a file in the root of your project named Map Info. Again, the wiki at zdoom.org is a great resource for learning how to do this, and the number of options available to you is extremely extensive. You're very free to define your own level layout to the point where you're making entirely new games. There is a small quirk of terminology in Map Info that we need to make clear first. According to the syntax we'll use here, an episode is not a collection of maps like you would expect. The term episode just defines a starting point that is presented to the player in the new game menu, and the name for a set of maps that should be grouped together is a cluster. The distinction starts to make more sense when you're making Hexen style wads with much more complicated relationships between maps and hubs, but knowing the difference is important for understanding what we're defining here. So we're going to start our map info off with the clear episodes command, which will do exactly what it says and will remove all existing episode definitions that GZ Doom already inferred from the Doom 2 iWOD. This leaves us free to define our own. We're going to define three episodes as an example, each of which are declared by the word episode, 
the name of the map lump where they should start, and then a pair of braces where we'll enter some more options. As each episode will have six levels, we'll space them out by starting each episode at maps 1, 7 and 13, and use the name property to give them names to display on the episode select screen. And though you might not believe it, we've already done quite a lot of the work. Now that these episode definitions are there, we can start up GZ Doom and it will present the player with an episode selection screen on starting the game because it detects more than one episode is available. Selecting Phase 1 will correctly take us to the first map of Sanctium. Phase 2 will take us to map 07, which doesn't have a custom map yet so it falls back to map 07 of Doom 2 Dead Simple, and Phase 3 will take us to the famous downtown map that everyone loves. However, all this has done is given us starting points. If the player were to start at episode 1 and play the maps through from there, they would just find themselves continuing on through the maps in the linear way that Doom 2 defines them because there's nothing that tells it to stop. To really define how these maps relate to each other, we're going to have to define some things about the individual maps as well. Let's start with defining maps 1 to 6 to represent the first episode. We want to define our first map with the map keyword and its respective map lump name, and making a definition for this map also allows us to give it a name that will show up in Zdoom instead of the default Doom 2 one. We also want to tell Zdoom that this map is part of a cluster that we've numbered 66, for example. Next, we can tell Zdoom what the next level in the sequence should be if the player exits the level normally. Finally, just for demonstration, I'm also going to tell GZ Doom to use R Sky 2, Doom 2's city skyline, as the sky texture for this map. You can also define a truly enormous array of other options here, like how falling damage or lighting or sky texture should be applied in a level, or if special hard coded Doom behaviours should apply, like the Map 07 Mancubus and Arachnotron specials. Again, look at the Z Doom wiki to see the sheer amount of stuff there is to play about with. For this wad, I'm going to copy and paste that definition for each map in the episode, giving them different names and defining that Map 01's exit should lead to Map 02, Map 02 should lead to Map 03, and so on. Map 05 has no next level, so it uses the definition slightly differently. If a Doom 2 map has no next map, it will go to displaying the cast sequence by default. Instead, we are going to use the end pick keyword here to define that it should show a picture using the credit lump as this example. We're going to use Map 06 as the secret level, so let's say we decide to put the entrance to it on Map 4. For this, we need to define it as Map 4's secret next in the same way as a normal next, and when the player finishes the secret level by taking a normal exit, I'll send them back to the start of Map 5. We're also going to need to do a little bit of editing on Map 04 and 06 to support our changes, and we can just go into Slade's own map editor to do it. Let's make this the stupidest secret level ever and just put the secret exit line action onto the entrance door. Map 6 doesn't really have much in it yet, so I'll just create a switch that acts as a normal exit. Now, if we start our game from Map 4, we can enter the secret level by pressing on the door where I hid the action. Zedoom reads our definition file, sees that when a player takes a secret exit on this map it should proceed to Map 6, and then when we complete Map 6 it continues on to Map 5. If we instead take the normal exit for Map 4, then we will go into Map 5 as normal. After completing Map 5, the game will end and take us to the credit screen like we specified. The last thing we can do is define some flavour text for completing the episode before we go to the end screen, like the episodes in Doom 1 did. We can do this by finally defining our cluster number 66. Notice that you never actually needed to define this cluster for the game to work, and I chose the number 66 to demonstrate that the number has no relation to any of the episodes or levels that we defined. They're usually useful for levels that interconnect with each other, like in Hexen and Strife, but they have a couple of properties that can make them useful for linear games as well. Here we're just going to define some music, a flat to show in the background, and some text under the cluster's exit text property. You can define the actual text in a couple of different ways. By telling Zdoom to go and look at the languages lump to get the text, like I demonstrated in the dehacked video, by telling it to look at the text content of a lump that we define, or just simply by writing the text in the definition ourselves. The presence of an exit text property on this cluster will cause the sequence to play when the player's next level has a different cluster number from this one. By defining Mapu 5's next destination as an end pick, you make the player cross out of the cluster. Their next destination has no cluster number, so the player is crossing from cluster 66 to somewhere else, and so the exit text sequence plays. After the player skips past the text, they go to the real next destination, which is the end pick. 
Now we would just need to copy and paste our level and cluster definitions and adapt them for the other two episodes that we defined earlier on. It's equally valid to send the player to a different map after completing a cluster. You could let the player play through the game continuously from wherever they decided to start by specifying the first map of the next cluster, map 07, as the next map from map 5. With that we're almost finished, but I said I'd also show a sort of tactic to making episodic games in Doom 2 without Zed Doom's niceties, so here it is. In classic Doom 2 the sequence of levels is immutable. All wads will keep playing until map 30 and show the end sequence, but it is at least possible to force a reset of the player's inventory using a couple of useful oddities in the Doom engine in what's called a death exit. The first useful oddity is that it's possible to arrange for the player to complete a level while dead. Even if a player has zero health they can still activate walkover line death types if they have enough momentum, usually due to being killed by a blast from an explosive. This includes line deaths that end the level, so if you can trap a player while they'll be blasted over an exit line due to a barrel exploding by crushing it for example, you'll be able to force them to exit while dead. You can prevent the player from getting through while alive by making the gap too small for them to fit through. When the player dies their height is quartered to 14, so if you have a gap that's 15 to 55 map units in height they'll only be able to slip through posthumously. When a dead player exits a level, the game advances to the next map but starts it as if the player had just died, resetting their inventory so that they begin with just 100 health, the pistol and 50 bullets. This creates a break of sorts between one map and the next and has the same effect on the player as if they'd had to start a new episode from the main menu. The alternative way to do this is by taking advantage of the way that killing a boss brain object, usually hidden out of sight behind a wall in map 30, will end the level no matter which map it's placed in. Unlike the Cyber Demon and Spider Mastermind levels from Doom 1, the action isn't hard coded by the game making a special case by looking at the level number, instead it's an action taken by the boss object itself. When it's finished its death sequence it calls a function called A Brain Die which immediately tells the game to advance to the next level. Therefore a more surefire way to set up a death exit is to teleport the player into a large pile of barrels and Romero's head. The player will telefrag a barrel and the resulting explosion will obliterate both the boss brain and the player. Since the boss doesn't check for the player being alive, it tells the game to advance to the next level anyway, producing the same result of starting the new level with the player's default inventory. These death exit tricks can be done in any level and you'll still see it happening in map sets designed to be compatible with vanilla or older source ports. They're not the most elegant thing in the world and they rely on the player not hitting use to restart with current level before they advance to the next, but they're great examples of the classic wad makers using Doom's accidental very physical way of scripting to their advantage.